the answer right here. They asked if I could do a review on the product. And of course, I was very interested, but then I wanted to ask my friend Gergo, who was also the editor for this channel, what he thought about it and if he had heard about them. And he's like, yeah, they're the real deal. So we wanted to give Dehancer a shot and do a review upon their request, but I also wanted to show it a whole different way. I wanted to show it from a beginner point of view, even though like when for my own music videos for like some of these artists and stuff that I work with, I will hire a colorist, but I'm always looking for opportunities to jump in there myself and play with color. I have played with it a little bit. I have, I quite like it, but I thought let's make it interesting and let's do a challenge. So it's going to be with me and my friend Gergo. This is us in Mexico two months ago, maybe. So that's Gergo and I, but I was coming back from Las Vegas and I have a client there that I crave direct for and I was driving back. I already had the car. I had my camera with me. I have the whole desert and I thought, you know what? We could sit there and we could do a very technical video for Dehancer, but there are so many of those already out there. So let's do it maybe from a beginner perspective. And I would even say for color, I would categorize myself as a beginner. And for Gergo and I both, because we are beginners to Dehancer, this is the perfect opportunity. So here's what I did. And then I asked him if he's up for the challenge and he wanted to do it. And he's the one that pushed me towards Dehancer. Here's what I did. I had this little camera, the DJI Osmo Action. So I decided to make a little movie and I made two movies. Both of them are identical in the editing. The only thing that I changed up on it was, and I didn't color it by the way. So I delivered it to Gergo raw. The movie is edited. One version, exact same cuts, exact same footage down to the millisecond. One of them has a little bit more of a hopeful song, wandering, happiness. And then the other one has more of a suspenseful vibe to it. Like I said, there's a lot of great videos that talk about the technical aspect of it. But as a director, as a photographer, I want to talk to you about how I like to use color. And then I'm going to give it to Gergo. And then he's going to add his own input on what he thinks matches the vibe of the song and, and the story. And then you get to see how color can affect the mood. Now, of course, there is music in there, so that's fair to mention. But the music doesn't carry as much as color does in photography, in film. You can really tell a story. Now, if you look at this chart right here, you get to see how crime generally bluer, cold, dismal future, isolation, generally cooler tones, uh, Western country western stuff western folk documentaries about like the old wild west arizona any place that is warm is generally on the warmer side then my favorite one right here is you know that hollywood is quite the prejudiced little in industry sometimes and so they wanted us to see mexico as a toxic land waste and so you get to see mexico in real life through the eyes of american cinema so i'm glad that they're not really doing that sort of racial profiling anymore if you go super far super 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 warm it could look toxic it could look it could look like a, a land waste post-apocalyptic if you go super far left to the cooler ones it could almost look like nighttime um you can make daytime look like nighttime and a lot of music videos do that but remember you can use color to tell stories and political campaigns they use color to make the other person look evil uh less trustworthy they use that to say oh for example i've seen commercials saying la is a land waste it, it's just so dirty it's so um hot and the pollution so they're using warmer colors like super saturated warm to sell a proposition that they want to put on the ballot color is one of the biggest tools that you're going to have in storytelling and it isn't just when you have the ability to tell the story color is incredibly useful when you want to sell your story i want to direct your documentary i want to direct your music video or your film and here's how i see it so if you want to convey a certain mood a certain attitude in your work you would make sure that your mood board has that type of imagery do you want it to be more of like warmer happier do you want it to be more cool or crime ridden depends on what the project is so let's show you the 30 seconds of the suspenseful one and then immediately the last half of it will be 30 seconds of the happier one
Alrighty, so that's what it is. Now let's go into his screen sharing. All right, so now let's watch Gergo's screen. He is working within DaVinci Resolve, but he's using the Dehancer color program, and he's gonna start playing around with it. So I'm gonna give you three tips that's gonna help you with color while you're also watching his screen. I hope that this is helpful. Number one, I would say study the color wheel. You've seen it, I've seen it, you've ignored it, and so have I. But if you were just to learn the color wheel, it, what it is is a roadmap to getting beautiful colors for you. It doesn't mean you have to follow it to a T. Know it, and then you know which rules to break. So for example, there's patterns that you can learn. Complementary colors. Remember this trend a couple years ago, that orange and blue look? Those are complementary colors. Two colors on the opposite side of the wheel. And it doesn't have to be orange and it doesn't have to be blue. You have many other colors to pick from. Or monochromatic. Did you know, I didn't know until I researched it, that it's three shades or three tones of one color base. That's it. Now that you know that, you know how to get a good monochromatic look. Or what about triadic? Three colors evenly spaced on the color wheel. But that's that's the part right there. Three colors evenly spaced on the color wheel. That's a beautiful look also. Another thing I want to talk to you about is that color grading, all that it is is just adjusting colors in a video to achieve a specific mood or a specific look. So how I like to do it, how I've always done it is this. I go with the most simple adjustments first, like correcting white balance, and then exposure, and then maybe some contrast. If I'm not really happy with it, or I think it can handle a little bit more, then what I'll do is I'll start playing with more creative experiments. And I'll start playing with highlights and um, all these other adjustments. My third tip, as we're watching Gergo do the coloring here, is it's a little bit of a story. One time I went to Jamaica with Usher and Chris Brown. And there was another artist named Esther Dean with us, and another one named Rico Love, but he's more of a producer. He's, of course, an artist, and he's a writer too. So one time I was waiting for Usher and Chris to get on the bus, and I went all the way to the back because that's where the better air conditioning was, especially in Jamaica. And Rico was back there. I'm like, what's up, man? How you doing? And I started asking him questions about his career because the guy is brilliant in what he does. And he said, you want to know a secret of mine? He said, I go to the opposite. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, when I'm writing for Usher, I will be inspired by somebody completely opposite. That's how I know I'm going to help him get a new sound. And I thought that that was so brilliant and so simple. And here's how I use it for my coloring. And I think that it might help you if you give it a chance. So from that moment on, I decided to listen to opposite artists when I was retouching Usher's images. For example, let me break it down. Usher is a man. So I would listen to a female artist. He's a black man. So I would listen to a white female artist. He's an R&B singer mostly. So then I would go to pop dance or I would go to country. And now everything is different. I used to listen to more of urban music, R&B, it could be anything when I was retouching Usher, but I decided to go opposite. For example, I could be listening to Dolly Parton. I know she's legendary. I know about four or five of her songs, but I don't know her catalog like that. Well, I do now because when I was retouching Usher, I was listening to Dolly as one of the artists. And I would pick up Dolly's energy and who she is and what she stood for. And then I would listen to that and then I would be inspired by that. And when I'm coloring Usher in Photoshop, I would be inspired by Dolly plus add one part Usher plus add one part Walid. And that's how we came up with the images. Not because I wanted to erase who Usher was, but I wanted to add to his legacy. If you are coloring something that has a country western vibe, try listening to heavy metal or hip hop. Or if you're doing something that's like a hip hop documentary, try listening to country music. See what that brings out of you because that's how you can be inspired by other people's work and then add your own mixture to it and get a whole new look and you're not copying anyone else. All right, it looks like Gergo's wrapping up. I'm gonna let him show us what he's done. And that is how Gergo colored it. So again, we wanted to keep it more of a beginner vibe. We wanted, and we wanted to show you what is possible. This, from even playing with Dehancer and myself, I think this, what Gergo showed us is just the tip of the iceberg. And we hope to show you in more YouTube videos on this channel as I go deeper, deeper into storytelling. Now let's see each video. Here is the happier version, and then we will jump into the suspenseful version right afterwards, the whole one minute video. All right, Gergo, let's go.
Alrighty. Do you see how color has an effect and how you could pick up the mood and make it seem almost harmless and friendlier just with color? I look like a nice guy. Now let's go into more of a suspenseful one. I'm up to no good here. And that's how you tell suspense. And that's how you start making it into a thriller without, I'm, listen, I'm not an actor, okay? I had this little guy here. I'm gonna defend this to my dying day. But I wanted you to see how much power color has. Of course, music is added to it, but color is so important. You can demonize someone. You can make someone a hero. You could sell a space. You could completely scare people away from a certain location. You could do so much. and in the future in an ai world i got one more tip after this but in a future in an ai world it's the people who use all the tools to bring out what is inside of them an artist that's the only way you're going to survive in an ai world because ai does not have a soul you have a soul so your work has to contain humanity comes from you you gotta love what you do if you're interested by the way in getting dehancer i got a link for you right there in the comments and the description of this video i kind of love the product a lot and so does Garib. I'm gonna speak for him, but he did text me. He's like, Well, this is great. If you are somebody that has thought about giving up in your photo or your video career, I beg of you to please watch this video. It's gonna help you out a lot. If you are somebody that is on your path and you're like, But I want to make more money, then this video is gonna help you out a ton. Now, you know that I read every single comment, I respond to every single one. So if you have questions, I do encourage you to do that down there. But if you could please give this a thumbs up, I'm trying to get the videos a little higher on the algorithm. And let me know if you have any ideas for next videos that you want me to cover to help you with your business. My name is Walid Azami and my work is right there. Thank you so much. And thank you, Gary.